Hi, welcome to Counterpunch with Trevor Loudon, the show that chronicles and exposes the unfolding world communist revolution. And we are in one, folks, there's no doubt about that. So I hope you like the show, share the show, pass it around, tell your friends about us. More people need to know what is going on. This is the issue of our time. Now, today I'm going to talk about, I'm going to profile one particular American communist. Now, the American Communist Party has got about 5,000 members. They are very, very disciplined. They're very active. They're working 24-7 to tear this country down. Everything that's good about America, they hate it and they want to bring it down. And I'm going to choose one of them because I think most Americans really don't understand communism. They don't understand that even communism exists or that it's really the dominant political force in the country right now. That would, that would be a statement that most Americans would just laugh at. But virtually everything that's going wrong in America today can be laid at the feet of the communists. The Communist Party USA, Liberation Road, Democratic Socialists of America, and the many allied organizations out there. And plus, those who have infiltrated the bureaucracy, the education system, etc., etc., etc. The revolutionary movement is... All through America, the churches, the government, the unions, the media, etc. And it is working to bring this country down. And most Americans have zero idea. So I'm going to focus on one person today, a woman called Judith LeBlanc. I'm sure you've never heard of her, but she's had a huge influence on this nation. And I hope by the end of this show, you'll realize just how much damage one individual disciplined trained communists can do. And I hope you'll start to think about how we need to deal with this problem, how we need to actually start investigating these people, exposing these people, um, prosecuting these people in many instances for what they are doing, because much of what they are doing is illegal. Right, now Judith LeBlanc joined the Communist Party USA back in Massachusetts in the mid-1970s. 1974, I think it was. She's a Native American. She's from the Caddo tribe of Oklahoma. But you can tell by her accent, she's lived mo most of her life in the Northeast. Well, when she hasn't been traveling all over the world, that is. But anyway, so she joined the party early on. She's really at almost 50 years service now. And she served on the party's um, leadership body. She served on the organization commission, the body that really coordinates the organization. Very important. She's also served for many years on the party's Peace and International Solidarity Commission. Now, what this body does is coordinate peace movement activity and solidarity with foreign communist movements, uh, terrorist groups, um, foreign communist uh, governments, etc. Now, the Communist Party USA is part of an international movement. It works with the Communist Party of China, it works with the, the Communist Party of Russia, Communist Party of Cuba, of Iran, of Iraq, of Japan, of Brazil. All over the world, you'll find the Communist Party has its tentacles out. From Vietnam to Africa to Europe, the Communist Party USA is an international organization. And Judith LeBlanc was right in the middle of this for about 15 or 20 years. The rich have pushed capitalism to the brink. And after 500 years, capitalism hasn't solved any basic needs of the people. The solution has got to be a socialist system. Communism is a system bent on world domination and destroying capitalism, destroying the fabric of Western society. It still has a goal of world domination. So the communists have always had the peace movement to work and agitate for U.S. disarmament, for French disarmament, for British disarmament. So Judith LeBlanc was heavily into the peace movement for several years. And the peace movement was really all about just disarming the West. She was um, also very heavily involved in the Palestinian cause, because the Palestinian cause is what is used by the communists to beat America's ally Israel. Judith LeBlanc in the early 2000s was in the Middle East on a regular basis. She was meeting with people like the uh, Palestinian ambassador to the United Nations, Riyad Mansour. She even had her hand kissed by the famous uh, terrorist um, Yasser Arafat, a KGB-trained operative. 
About eight years ago, Judith LeBlanc totally changed track, totally changed her career from peace and justice and international communist solidarity to domestic issues. Now, this wouldn't have been a decision she made. When you're in the Communist Party, especially at higher levels, you don't decide which field you work in. You don't decide, I'm going to be a peace activist, I'm going to be a religious activist, I'm going to be a union activist, or I'm going to work within the Democratic Party. You don't decide that. The party decides what you will do, and they will assign you. So the fact that Judith LeBlanc moved from peace and solidarity, very important, um, you know, in communist terms, to domestic organizing amongst the Native American communities is a very significant thing. It means the Communist Party decided that her talents were better served by working amongst the Native American communities of this country. Now, why would they want to do that? You know, the Native American communities are, you know, it's one or two percent of the population. It's not a significant population in terms of demographics, but in certain key swing states, I'm talking Minnesota, Arizona, Wisconsin, Montana, the Native American population can provide the difference in tight elections. Now, one of the big things she did to, to really get herself well known in the Native American community, in 2016, with the Dakota Access Pipeline protests up in the Dakotas, thousands of Indians there protesting this, this pipeline that would have cut through some of their land. Judith LeBlanc, in her role as chief organizer of the Native Organizers Alliance, was up there stirring it up, organizing it. She played a key organizational role in that movement. While Judith LeBlanc was on the campaign trail, and while she was actually up in North Dakota and South Dakota, she met a woman called Deb Harland. Now, Deb Harland was a, a congresswoman from New Mexico, serving her first term. And she was not really well known. She was a very, very radical. They got formed a bit of a tight partnership here. There's photographs of them having dinner together, attending forums together, attending meetings together, webinars together. Deb Harland and Judith LeBlanc are pretty darn close. She started a campaign to get Deb Harland, this very obscure congresswoman from New Mexico, no one knew of her, to become Secretary of the Interior, a cabinet position. The Secretary of the Interior oversees 20% of this country's land area. In the Western states, some states are up to 90% federal land. That's all overseen by the Department of Interior. The Indian reservations, the border areas, global warming policy, massive amounts of public land farming, massive amounts of mining and energy extraction. This is a critical post. This is one of the most powerful posts in the United States. And Judith LeBlanc, a bona fide Communist Party member, a leader of a party that supports Communist China and the Communist Party of Russia, engineered the rise of this obscure Congresswoman from New Mexico. And guess what? After several hearings and some quite contentious hearings in the Senate, the Senate voted to confirm Deb Haaland. The yeas are 51, the nays are 40, the nomination is confirmed. And now she's up there in Washington DC overseeing 20% of this country. Of course, Biden cancelled the Dakota Access Pipeline within days of taking office, putting thousands of people out of work, reducing America's energy independence. Why would he want to do that? Because there is pressure from the far left to do it, because the far left, the Communist Party, just like they work to disarm America, they are working to weaken America economically, to weaken America's energy independence. This is a communist program, and now you have a Communist Party ally in charge of 20% of the land mass of this country basically carrying out a communist program. This is the influence, people, of one dedicated communist. This is a woman who's worked with terrorists, who has been on the international stage, who has spoken at the United Nations, who has run two of the largest peace organizations in the country,
who is one who runs the largest Native American organizing organization in the country, who has run presidential forums, and now has basically positioned a leading Marxist as Secretary of the Interior. Is that enough influence for you? Do you believe me now that communists can have a very negative effect on a country? And she's only one of them, folks. There are 5,000 members of the Communist Party USA, many in public office. There are probably about 80 to 100,000 hardcore dedicated communists from various political parties working in this country today, plus tens of thousands of more of their allies and supporters in academia, in your government, in the union movement, in Hollywood, in the education system, and they are working to a plan to bring this country to its knees. You see, when you talk to a modern American communist and you say to them, look, don't you understand this stuff doesn't work? Look at the mess that Cuba is. Look at Venezuela. Look at the horrors of China. Look at Russia. It collapsed. The Soviet Union collapsed. That's communism. Why would you want to support that? And this is the answer they will give you. Communism collapsed in the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe. Uh, Cuba is poor. Venezuela is destitute because America sabotaged it. Because America bankrupted the Soviet Union in an arms race because America has blockaded Cuba for decades, because America has been trying to starve Venezuela into submission. Therefore, it's America's fault. Therefore, if we want worldwide communism, paradise on earth for everybody, we have to destroy the United States. We have to weaken the United States. We have to destroy the United States military, drive the US into civil war if we can, to take it off the world stage, even set it up for invasion by China and Russia. We have to do that because America, the United States of America, is the number one impediment to world communism. And now look, we have our friend as Secretary of the Interior. Do you think China might be happy about that? If Deb Haaland does, as I think she will do, is cut, is basically abolish um, energy extraction on public lands, make it hard to mine on public lands, that is going to impact America economically and politically and militarily, right when Russia and China are building up and are more powerful than they ever have been. If you were Xi Jinping or Vladimir Putin, would you be happy to have Deb Haaland in the White House as Secretary of the Interior right now? Would you be really, really pleased with Judith LeBlanc and the work she has done to make that happen? I think so. I think if there is a successful communist revolution in this country, I think Judith LeBlanc will get the order of Lenin. So I hope you've found this interesting, folks. I hope it makes you think about the power of communism and what we need to do to combat it. We've done virtually nothing on a government level to combat communism for more than 40 years now. You imagine if you have cancer and you stop all treatment for about 10 years, what's your body going to look like? Well, we've stopped all treatment of communism since the 1990s, and now it has spread like cancer all through the United States. So please pass this around, send it to people you think may be able to do something with this or raise a bit of a ruckus about it. We've got to raise awareness. We haven't got a lot of time to do it. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll tune in to the next episode and the next episode after that. God bless America and God bless every one of you. Thank you.